My name is Ananya. I'm a 16-year-old brain-computer interface developer. I've built brain-controlled remote control cars, brain-controlled music players, and prosthetic arms. And I'm supported by companies like Microsoft. I'm super interested and fascinated by a lot of different technologies. And I know that in my near future, I want to start a company to impact billions. So right now, I'm focusing on learning as much as possible and building the skills and knowledge in order to do so. <laughs> For brain-computer interfaces, there's a long way to go. The technology still needs to be developed in a whole bunch of ways. Currently, the way that we do things in this industry is with hardware is like EEG, so it's electrodes that you place on your head to pick up brain signals, and ECOGs, which are implantable. Sometimes people use MRIs. And then from there, you're able to find data run it through machine learning algorithms and get insights and then use the insights to control prosthetics and different things. But the problem is that our hardware is really bad. So it's really hard to get good brain signals. The reason why I'm invested in a space, even though I know that it has a long way to go, is because when I think about myself, I kind of want to work in something for maybe like 20 years. Like I have a whole future ahead of me. So I think that even if it develops in the next five, 10 years, I'll still have the background knowledge and I'll still be young enough to be able to make an impact in the space. I then started buying hardware and um, pieces off of the internet to try and see if I could build something at home because I learn the best when I'm building. So I wanted to see if I could build something to learn. And I ended up spending hours sitting in front of my computer programming, calling people, messaging people um, in the industry to try and help me. And then I ended up building the um, brain control toy car. There are lots of possibilities with brain computer interfaces. One that gets me really excited is about health. People have been using it for prosthetics because if you implant um, devices into the brain, we can pick up the signals of how you would like to move your arm. So if you don't have your arm, we can pick up those signals and we can transfer them into a prosthetic arm. So we can give you that functionality back. If you think longer in the future though, a lot more becomes possible. People are working on brain-to-brain -brain communication. So instead of me talking to you, you would just already know. And it's crazy, but scientists are working on it and primitive brain-to-brain -brain uh, communication devices have already been achieved. A lot of people think that by the 2030s, we might just all have brain chips or uh, implants to make us all smarter and better and be able to download information. With technology that has the ability to completely change the world, it's really important that we ask ourselves critical questions. For example, your brain could be hacked, or people are working on ways to make you feel different emotions. The US government is doing a study where they're trying to find mood controlling implants to try to cure things like PTSD. But if you take that a little bit further, people are even wondering if all this progress in human development is actually making us happier. <laughs> and they're really important questions. Um, in terms of creating a world that we want to live in. I go to a lot of tech conferences and I always walk in the room and I look around and I usually see a sea of men. I think it's getting better. I think if you look at five years ago, you're gonna see even less. 10 years ago, almost nothing. And I think five years in the future, 10 years in the future, it's only gonna continue getting better because of all the programs, because we're more aware of it now. Because at a younger age for women, there's a lot of science programs were encouraged. So I feel like it's getting a lot better, which makes me happy. I think young people are super important in advancing the technology industry. 10 years ago, if I wanted to learn about brain computer interfaces in my basement, it would have been almost impossible. I would have definitely had to have gotten a PhD. But now, because of all the information that's available in the information era, it's so possible to gain that knowledge. So the combination of having lots of access to knowledge and lots of access to people, I think just allows for greater accessibility for anyone. And you see younger people with different values, with different ideas, not held back by societal constraints, able to change the world.